All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. I am DDO's community manager, Cordovan, and I'll be with you for the next hour, hanging out, having some fun. I uh, have a little bit of the latest news and probably spend a bit of time just sort of talking about what's going to be happening here in the next couple of weeks before I actually head out for a couple of weeks. This is going to be my last show uh, for uh, the next two weeks. So I won't be on next week, won't be on the week after that, and then I'll be back with you, maybe on a different server. Maybe it's time to, to hit up a different server just uh, just for the heck of it. And uh, continue the rotation as it were. But welcome everybody, hope you're having a okay time here in game and uh, elsewhere. We've got some some news, actually quite a bit of news I think I've been able to pull together here. As I started to look over it's like, well what am I going to talk about today? What do we actually have going on? Uh, the answer is actually a fair amount here in the next couple of weeks, so I'll, I'll uh, talk about that in just a smidge. Uh, kind of rolling into the show as you'd expect, a little unprepared. We've been busy. We have been very, very busy. I don't want to get rid of all my items I might need, so I'll keep that Dodge 13 for now. So how are you doing? What do you got going on? First thing I could mention is our bonus days, because that's actually a little bit of news there right now. And uh, our bonus days are going to be the Mimic Hunt. Yeah, we've got the Mimic Hunt coming back. It kicks off, what day is today? Today is the 29th, so it kicks off late morning Eastern Time tomorrow and is set to run through Wednesday, October 6th, being shut off the morning of the 7th when we uh fl flip over to our next bonus presumably so yeah mimicon live regular game servers sorry if you don't like it good news if you do uh but nonetheless that's what's going on uh next but we do have a few other things i can talk about as well as i'm looking over on the calendar as to what we have going on you know this week next week and what have you i could say next week uh, roughly Tuesday-ish, we're planning for our second preview of Update 51's Epic Destiny work. And uh, that'll be um, on Tuesday, most likely. Tuesday afternoon-ish. We'll stay tuned for a formal open time. But that'll be the second preview of Update 51. Presumably, at the very least, polish on the ones you saw last time and probably a few more new ones that you have not seen yet as well. We do also have a third preview set for a few weeks after that, a uh, week of the 17th sometime. Not sure if it's uh, going to be uh, exact start time on that. Stay tuned, but uh, hey, that's what's up. So basically a preview of Update 51 next week, preview of Update 51 preview thrice in two weeks, and then a few weeks after that, we're roughly set to release Update 51. So currently planned for early November on the release date of Update 51. We'll see where that goes. We still have more than a month yet, right? Uh, so things could definitely shift between now and then, but roughly that's the plan is to release Update 51 in early November. It's also going to coincide with the end of Night Revels. What? Yeah, so not next week. But the week after, so that would be roughly around uh, October 13th. The morning of the 13th, uh, we're going to have a small patch, largely, I believe, to bring in Night Revels, although I think some of the itemization fixes that Linabel was doing and what have you were also in that preview. Um, or that, that, not preview, but uh, release. I don't actually know what it's going to be called. I guess update 50 point whatever we happen to be at. But that's set for October 13th, along with the start of Night Revels. And a little bit later on in the show, I can talk a little bit about, in general, what's going to be happening with Night Revels this year, because we're going to be changing the way the, the system works, as it were, for Night Revels to address some long-term community wants uh, and our own wants and deeds as well. So, hey, that's quite a bit of news, huh? We got the preview, we got Night Revels, got a rough release date of Update 51. We have the Mimic Hunt. We got a whole bunch more Epic Destinies. 
that we're going to be focusing on here. I also wanted to follow up quickly uh, from last week's show. We had a question. Oops. We had a question about uh, who's going to get the cloak when Update 51 releases, whether that had to do with having your Karma Spheres capped out or having your Destinies capped out. And I, After the show, I was able to track down an answer uh, with the systems team, and the answer is it's your Destinies that must be capped out. So see, like when I go over to Fury of the Wild here and I got all four of these dots maxed out here, and there's a little five there, that's what you need on all of them. Uh, when update 51 releases and if that's you uh, you're going to get a cloak really uh, to commemorate the work you've done uh, on the old epic destiny system and i think managed to polish through most of the news in less than 10 minutes so if you don't care about anything else have fun <laughs> but i'm going to hang out and, and have a, a a time with everyone here as well run through some salt marsh uh, finish up what I've I've got going on. I suppose we'll we'll head to the Sahagan Fortress, Sahagan, Sawajin Fortress, and there we go. All right, let's head over to the chat. Digging the music at the start of the show. Yeah, that's that. I found an old track. That's uh, music in game. You'll see it in like Fjordland Carnival and a whole bunch of other places. Uh, but I was able to find the audio file, and it seems to be a pretty good kind of show starting soon music. So I think I'm going to kind of keep it going for a while. The best place to hide from reality is DDO, someone writes. I agree. Yeah. I broke out the hoodie. Yes, I know. It's it's starting to feel very fall-like here in New England. We're at that weird time of the year where it's cold in the morning, hot in the afternoon, sort of getting chilly in the evening and then it gets cold overnight so you you sort of need everything right now you, you need your heater and your sunglasses and your shorts and t-shirt <laughs> depending on the time of day i'll take it though it also means a really beautiful uh fall is in store here for new england and that's always real cool so i'm not aware of any new mimic hunt rewards so, you know, but it's been a while and we definitely had people asking for us to bring it back uh, when it hit uh, the other game worlds here. So, and also, hello everyone. Hello you. How you doing? All right, let me uh, pop on over. Are we going to bring back the server-wide Mimic Frenzy? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Sorry. Two questions. Autos boxes, question mark. Next hardcore season, question mark. I don't know on the autos boxes. Uh, that is ultimately a question for kind of e-commerce and sales and all that sort of thing. We don't typically do a lot of announcing of that ahead of time. I would expect it around the standard sales beats, if I can use that terminology. So perhaps something along the lines of, at the very least, um, you know, end of November. But we'll see what we do. Uh, in terms of whether we perhaps uh, bring it out before them. But I would expect something in the range of, of probably around end of November. But we'll see. Next hardcore season is actually something we've been discussing internally just over the past couple of weeks. I don't have an exact start time for you, but we are planning to release it. Uh, currently, the schedule has us releasing it in December. Uh, probably something around-ish the middle of December. But a lot of things are still kind of up in the air on a final date of that. Um, depending on some work that has to get done. But the current plan is we do want to do the start of the season by the end of the year. And we're largely on track to do that.
I believe the cloak is granted per character, not unlocked for all characters on all servers. So if your characters reach that epic destiny threshold, you'll get the cloak. Now, I don't, I don't know if the cloak is bound to a count or bound to character. I believe it's awarded to the character that's at the achievement. Whether or not you can trade the cloak to your other characters, I simply don't know. Sorry. Ah, welcome. Uh, welcome, person in the public group here. Yeah, welcome. So we have my voice chat on. Welcome, have fun. Uh, I'm going to head over to the so Sawagan Fortress in just a little bit here. And that's all the way over there. So yes, on the Night Revel start date, that is pretty much set in stone, and that is currently set for October 13th. The way it is most likely going to happen is we have a small patch set for that morning. You know, that's a Wednesday morning. And so we'll uh, have the patch that's largely facilitating Night Revels, but I believe there are some other itemization bug fixes uh, that I know at least Linabel's been talking about in the forums. Presumably that stuff's going to be in there. Uh, as soon as I know, I can let you know. But there we go. Uh, but it'll be October 13th. And the current plan has it running through November 2nd. Which, or well, actually I don't think that's true. Through November 4th. First, because the second is a Wednesday. So my guess is it would be like through the first. But we'll have formal uh, dating on that as we get closer to October 13th. Uh, Night Revels will be a little longer than... Oh, actually, I guess it will be about uh, two full weeks this time around. Maybe a little bit longer than that. But that's, uh, that's, that's the current plan. So autos should come out before hardcore, since you will not have autos with hardcore. Uh, I don't know that we've ever formally actually said that. Now it is true that to date, I don't believe we've ever uh, released autos boxes during a hardcore season. But there's nothing actually stopping us from doing it. We could. We could. Um... It's not like we have a formal ban on it or anything like that. But I don't think that's going to be relevant anyway. Uh, because uh, under the current plan, you know, if, if we don't... If Hardcore Season 5 happens, let's just say something like mid-December, um, that would still give us plenty of opportunity uh, to get... Night, uh, to get uh, Otto's boxes out uh, and not have it uh, happen during Hardcore. But I don't think we've ever actually... We don't have a formal prohibition on it. We just haven't done it. So. So when is Epic Destiny Preview 2? That is currently set. Let me double check. Make sure that what I just said is true. Yes. Uh, that is currently set for next week. Uh, something in the range of Tuesday afternoon through Thursday afternoon. And that'll be the second Epic Destiny preview. I don't yet know what all is going to be in that preview, but I would expect it to uh, include some of the new Epic Destinies along with old uh, st uh, updates to what we've already seen. I understand there might be a kind of a philosophical argument about autos boxes during hardcore. I guess all I would say is that I don't actually expect it to be a practical issue. It might be a forum conversation, but in terms of what people actually do. All right. I'll search for hidden areas on the lower level. Uh, when are we getting, quote, the new raid? Uh, we currently have a raid being developed for 
not update 51, but probably after that. So whether it ends up being in our uh, update 52, say December patch, typically our December patch is smaller in scope. It, so we'll have to see what it ends up actually being this year. But, uh, ooh, oh no! Oh, you know what? I'm just going to release. Going on a lower difficulty. Or maybe get myself a cleric. That's probably what I should do. Real quick. I'll actually just get a Garrett. There we go. Now oh, I got back up here. Whoa! <laughs> I ended up in the Hall of Heroes. Ah. Oops. Guess I haven't uh, recalled out in a while. Do I have my uh, teleport item to Salt Marsh? I don't think I do. Good job, me. Oh, no, here we go. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a cleric in this case. I'm a barbarian on Wayfinder. A quick uh, get my health back up. Walk of Shane time for sure. That was pretty poor. All right, well, what do you do about it? So I would expect uh, the new raid to potentially hit late this year, perhaps with update 52. Any idea on, uh, okay, I already answered Night Revel start date. My understanding on the time duration for cloak delivery with the release of update 51 is that it is upon time of release. So if when update 51 is released, if you have all of your epic destinies capped out, you will get that cosmetic cloak. I do think, uh, Matthew Bry, uh, I, I get that you're concerned about the time of preview to release for the Magus of the Eclipse, but we'll have plenty of time to address feedback on it before its release. All right, let me pop on over to YouTube quick, see what's going on. No, uh, my understanding is, well... I better not say anything on that, Grass Kitch. Grass Kitch is asking on Twitch, will the new raid require the Feywild expansion? My belief is the answer is no. Oh, definitely it's not going to require the Feywild expansion. Well, yeah, I think the answer is no. I think it's standalone. But I could be wrong there, so I don't actually know the answer to that. Sorry. So is update 51 only about epic destinies and bug fixes? That's correct. Uh, we are actually, this is, I believe, not since we released Warlock, because I believe Warlock was largely a uh, systems, if you include a class as a system rather than content, uh, the last systems release that we've had. But update 51 is big enough uh, that it is epic destinies. Uh, rather than Epic Destinies in a quest pack or something like that. All right, let me pop on over to YouTube, like I said. Mimic and a Hardcore Season 4 terrified many players. It sure did. <laughs> uh, but we have not had uh, the Mimic Hunt on the regular game world since before 
Hardcore Season 4. And I know that we had some people during Hardcore Season 4 who were like, can we please bring it to the live game world? So uh, we are doing that now. Uh, and that'll be starting this week. I can't provide details on Hardcore Season 5. Those discussions are underway. Uh, we have plans, but I can't say anything more than that. Uh, Tom G, sorry over on YouTube. Uh, asked, Tom G asks, for November, can we add some SSG merch like t-shirts and hoodies? No. No, it's the answer to that. Uh, we do not have merchandising rights for Dungeons & Dragons Online. And that means that we cannot sell t-shirts. The hoodie that, for example, I'm wearing is simply uh, was made for employees. And that doesn't require a merchandising rights license. But if we were to say sell them, it would. And that is not something we're likely to be able to receive. All right, let me pop on over to Facebook then. Will the cloak require full spheres? Someone is coming back uh, to the show late. Uh, no on the spheres. This has to do with your epic destinies themselves. So, for example, if all of your epic destinies here are capped out when update 51 is released. I don't know on the Legendary Sands items. It's on the to-do list, but I don't, don't know what the release date plan is for that. Yes, my understand Arrow on Facebook is your Epic Destinies must be capped. So yes, I understand that your final Destiny points get unlocked when you hit level 5 rather than when you complete level 5. But my understanding is this is about capped. Will update 51 fix the chat spam you get if you open the Epic Destiny page while you are heroic? I think the answer is yes, because that whole system no longer will exist. <laughs> so I think the answer is yes. I guess we'll see. But, uh, yeah. No, Apocalypse Dom, I'm sorry. I appreciate the effort that you put into kind of the hardcore seasons and that, but no, we're not rewarding someone with like lifetime VIP, regardless of their accomplishment in the hardcore season. Sorry. Uh, you thought, someone is saying, I thought SSG did have merchandising rights at, for SSG. So it's a little bit of a complicated answer 
the answer is there is nothing theoretically stopping us from making Standing Stone Games merch. I, I do think there would still be, you know, it's not like we could just immediately go to Teespring or something and make it happen. You know, I, I do think some legal contracts would be involved just to, to make sure that However, the money ends up getting distributed, even if the point isn't really to make money. Whatever revenue is distributed is is done with, you know, whatever legal agreements are required. But I do think we theoretically have the ability to do, like, SSG merch. I also don't think that would sell necessarily all that well. People, I mean, I'm sure peop there are some people out there who would appreciate an SSG shirt. But let's be real, you want a DDO or Lotro shirt. And uh, that is going, to, that would be a, a bigger task. Theoretically possible on the Lord of the Rings online side. Uh, if we were able to work out whatever contract work we had to do, or licensor work associated with that. But on the DDO side, uh, we do not. We explicitly do not have merchandising rights. So that would, uh, that would be an additional license, as I understand it, essentially, that we would have to acquire so never say never but uh, you know I'd like it I, I've occasionally uh, Asked, begged, pleaded uh, over the years, but you know the reality is, is it's it's just a fairly complicated discussion, unfortunately. Right, let me actually go back. There's a bit I missed here. Uh, will content creators get early access to the next two Lamania previews? Uh, I will have to get back to you on that. I don't think so, although I'm not opposed to doing it for next week if, if we're going to do a bunch of Epic Destinies and people want to. Uh, but otherwise, I think, frankly, the fact that I'm not going to be around for that one preview is going to make it difficult to pull off a content creator preview. <laughs> But, uh, maybe. But the, the intention is mostly to do the content creator previews, not every time. Um, mostly when there's just something real big going on. Uh, and you could argue that the second half of our Epic Destiny preview might qualify. But, um, I don't know. I don't know, ultimately, is the answer. But I think perhaps Chains not. The wall indicate that this room is used to house slaves. At first you think there's no one here. But then, you hear the wounds of labored breathing. A lone figure lies curled up in the far corner. There's nothing you can do. Despite your best efforts, the exhausted slave dies. Enjoy his life. last words but ask him about his comrades and, and the fate of his journey. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just using the Barovian Great Axe right now as my You're weapon. This character, I've talked about this on the show in the past, but this character is working on their gear, but is is working on it. And I've got that uh, Great Axe here. So, I mean, I guess it depends who you ask. Do I think it would be worthwhile to be able to offer DDO shirts? I don't think it's going to be a big money maker for us, but I don't think that's the point. And honestly, in all of our conversations, that's never really been the point. Uh, the point has been more, wouldn't it be cool than, you know, would we make a bunch of money on it? I mean, it would have, you know, it's not like it wouldn't have any promotional benefit or anything, but, uh, but you know. I don't think the purpose would be as a revenue generator. The purpose would be more because it would be sweet. 
and uh, people would like it. And it would help spread the word of our game, so. Uh, the content creator access token was specific to that preview, as I understand it. It's not a permanent grant on the account. Although that said, if you got in last time, there's no reason we wouldn't want you to get in this time. So, you know, it's totally cool. But I think uh, just for housekeeping reasons, uh, that token is applied and unapplied for our previews. Excuse me. Will the Fate Spinner NPC still exist upon the release of Update 51? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh... And there's a reason for it. I'd have to go back through the release notes now to <laughs> to remind myself what that reason was. But we're going to be using the uh, NPC. NPC is going to be used for other for things related to the Epic Destiny system. Actually, that's who's going to teleport you to the sphere, the junction of the spheres. Do have a couple of rooms I want to explore yet. I'm gonna go back, hit up that one room, and also hit up this room. Could we make merch for free promotional giveaways? So, yeah, that's that's a a bit of a gray area, isn't it? I suspect the answer might be yes. But I don't know that practically that is likely to happen. Because, frankly, making a bunch of t-shirts is super duper expensive. Anyone who's ever been in a band and was like, Man, wouldn't it be cool if we had band shirts? Suddenly realizes that the reason people charge 25 30 bucks for a t-shirt is because it costs the person 20 to $22 to make it. Per shirt on a lot of these print shops, right? It gets real expensive real quick. <laughs> yes, Keys of Destiny and Call of Destinies are no longer valuable after the release of Update 51, and we've already gotten the release notes what the conversion is for that. That should be able to be available to you on the uh, Lamania forums. And again, I can't think of what the answer is off the top of my head. Alright. Before I go down, I'm going to Explore a bit more. <laughs> so hardcore, let's see what does it say. So hardcore in November means, oh actually hardcore is not set for November. So first off, uh, sorry uh, if I gave that impression, but hardcore is currently planned for December, not November. But Nightmare Before Christmas, Maybe. <laughs> I like it. Not all that glitters is gold. Yeah, you're also using the fate 
singer or the fate spinner to take your epic levels as well. I think I've got everything I need here. No more. Oop. There we go. Adventuring Oratorio. Adventuring Oratorio. I'm going to have to look up what the definition of Oratorio is. Gold roll. Someone wants me to do my gold roll. Yeah, I, I really should have a non-capped character. Uh... Because I, I'm kind of wasting those stones of experience right now. All right, yeah, I've properly searched it all out here. So now let's move on over to the next area, which is down in that corner there. Yeah, so isn't for some reason I when I think of oratorio, I think of songs, but is it really just like a speech? Would it be it, would an adventuring oratorio be basically a speech about adventuring or are we talking about a song about adventuring? Cuz if I just picked up an adventuring song, that's kind of cool. Yeah, large-scale musical work for orchestra and voices. Okay. So an adventuring oratorio would be like a musical performance of like, you know, if I were a soul stone, you know, whatever. So that's pretty cool. Any chance of a share quest button next to the XP and recall button? Theoretically, that is something we could do. I don't know that... I think there would have to be a conversation about how much buttons are really needed to be visible at all times and whether or not it's fairly easy to share a quest by just hitting L and hitting a button there. It feels like maybe an unnecessary... like. If we were to redo modern L, uh, UI design for DDO, you know, someday that'll probably happen, right? But whenever that does happen, I think there would be a question about whether that would be a good use of resources to, to put, put that there. I say no. Perhaps I could be swayed that I'm wrong. Uh, that's funny. Hopefully I wasn't too out of key. I'm not a singer. It, it may surprise you to learn I'm not actually a professional singer. I mean, I know, you know, it sounded bad, but uh, I'm also bad at singing, so, you know. Yeah. There's a reason all the bands I've been in over the years were instrumentals. Because <laughs> I can't sing worth garbage. Yeah, we're aware of the popularity of the footsteps from season one. And the thought has come up that we should do that kind of thing more in the future. Uh, I don't, we just haven't really done it yet. 
All right, let me pop on over to YouTube here quick. I uh, do. I play an instrument, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually a flute player, uh, all the way back from when I was in grade school. Uh, I've been a flute player for a very long time, and I did do that uh, in bands, rock, rock jazz bands, and such over the years as well. On top of that, I uh, although I'm pretty rusty because you know life moves on. Uh, I play the bass guitar as well. And I can bang out a few chords on the keyboard, but I'm not very good at that. I haven't been in a band, though, in more than 10 years, so, you know. I don't know if it'll ever happen again or not. The thought has come up that maybe I'd, I'd like to do it, do it again, but Who's got the time for that? The ground trembles. The water rises once again. The must be using magic. I have some of my old music uh, actually up in a few different places for those interested in checking it out. It's nothing fancy and it's whatever. Uh, but I do have it there for anyone who's interested. You can find it on archive.org. I uploaded it all to the free archive there. It's all free use Creative Commons. And it's under uh, my personal name, uh, Jerry Snook, on some kind of cheapy home recordings I did in the early 2000s. And uh, then the band I was in called Moto Sota. M-O-T-O-S-O-T-A. Got a couple albums available to listen to on archive. Not that I think anyone should do it, but, you know, if you really are curious. Slap in the wave, sentient gem, she sings. Oops, yep. Did I miss? Yeah, that's eh, fine. All right. All right. So like the Jethro Tull of D&D. I, I suppose. I suppose. Not too much like Jethro Tull, though. Always more of a Roland Kirk fan myself. Along with, uh... <laughs> You're asking too much, Cindy and Jim. I'm sorry. Avoid traps? That's eh, not the Cordova way. the wolf, not a full backpack. Alright, All right, where are we at? What do we gotta do? Looks like we gotta go back a ways. This way. Oh, clear a few things out here.
Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm not like a, a trained jazz musician. It was very amateur on my part. Uh, I'm more of a fan of just doing it. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of jazzish. Jazz instrumental rock-ish. I don't know. It was whatever it was, I guess. I can read music, though. Uh, so, you know, I do have some some ability to do that. But I would never consider myself to be a qualified jazz performer. That takes actual skill uh, that I don't have. Okay, you know what? Uh, there's one thing I, I uh, tease, and now that we're towards the end of the show, let me go and uh, make sure I get that information out, because like I say, I'm not going to be here next week, and I'm not going to be here the week following. So a couple of the changes that we're planning to do for the Night Revels event this year is to really separate out key acquisition for the Night Revels dungeons from the requirement to be finding those keys in the landscape of the Dolores graveyard unless you uh, have a Night Revels chocolate. So the way it's going to work is that there will be an opportunity to get these keys and Night Revel ingredients just by running regular content basically something along the lines of undead will have a chance to drop this stuff and then in the past you know we had an item that you could acquire that would allow you to earn this stuff uh, outside of the Dolores graveyard landscape what we're going to be doing is that's just the default now uh, it'll just be there um, you can run the night Revels landscape if you want to, but you don't have to. What those items will do is increase the chance uh, for you to get keys and chocolate and that kind of thing. Lone figure cowers in the corner of the room. Must be one of the servants. All right, uh, and so that's the that's the core of what's going on. Uh, is that we're going to be doing that. Uh, I believe there, there's a few new items that I know are coming. You know, we're going to have a, a new color of the Night Revels armor like usual and a few other things. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it is going to... Those are the bulk of the changes. And I know we got something pretty exciting and that's just going to be straight up in the DDO store as well. Uh, that I think is going to be released in time for that particular Halloweenish holiday. I can't say more about it than that. Uh, so that's our plan for Night Revels. We have some new stuff. We're going to separate the need to be in the Night Revels landscape. Uh, you'll just be able to run whatever content you prefer, uh, with the exception of that it's for Undead. So Undead will... Um, have an opportunity to do that. And there we go. Alright, let me get caught up on chat. Do I have photos of merch right? <laughs> that's funny. Now that's funny. Uh.
All right. All right. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I will take that. Yeah, so this weekend's bonus is the Mimic Hunt event. Night Revels will start October 13th. I can't talk about whether we might be bringing back the free coupon for DDO that recently came back for the other game. Going to have to pull the... We have nothing to announce at this time. So I had said a while ago, what about removing spell components from the game? I don't know that it... Yeah, I mean, you know, you could. I don't know that there's actually much interest in doing so. But you could. Let's see, what else should I talk about? I don't know that we actually have a whole lot else. I actually covered, a, I think, a fair amount of news here in the, that first 10 minutes. Oh, all right. Someone completing the quest for me. That's all right. That's all good. Enjoy the moment, but don't let this distract you from the mission. I realize that it doesn't actually uh, remove the need for any spell components, but there is the issue materials feed <laughs> if you really want to. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got. All right, that's fine. I already got my minor artifact. Okay, before I wrap it up, let's do that gold roll. What do we got? All right, I'll take it. Cool, thanks for your help here today. Nay, Graskich, nay, sorry, I can't give any more hint. Yeah, so uh, thanks very much for watching here. Like I said, I'm going to be not here next week. Uh, I'm going to be on the road, actually, next week. And then the week following, I'm going to be uh, back on the road. Uh, so I will see you, and I guess it'll be three weeks here. 
for more of the weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream. Um, I'll we'll be doing some work during that time, so we'll be up to date on things like release notes and announcements and and what have you. But uh, but I do have have some stuff I'm doing here over the next couple of weeks. So uh, thanks everyone for being here, and I'm gonna see you in I guess about three weeks time with more. So. Hope you're having a good time, and I'll talk to you again soon.